<clears throat> I'm ready whenever. Okay, it'll be about 20 minutes. No problem. Hey, Skyless Black, how are you doing? Good, man. How are you? Good. So I've read your stuff uh, from the looks of it. You And it's funny, I've talked to you just for a second, but it seems like you're very consistent with the way you're, you write, which is straightforward to the point. Just <laughs> put it all there. Uh, but why don't you tell me a little bit about your background? Um, I should introduce you. That's the polite way to do it. But I, I have a feeling you could cover stuff that I couldn't. Um, yeah, no yeah, no worries, man. Uh, I mean, first, uh, above all, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to make this happen. I mean, any, any chance that we can get our word out, it's, it's a good thing. <laughs> so I, I've been involved in, you know, E for a number of years and specifically faction warfare for more than four and a half. Uh, so I've seen the good, the bad and the ugly. And, <laughs> you know, if there's anything that's happened over the last few years, uh, we, we've all built relationships. Uh, we've seen relationships grow with Inside Faction Warfare. They've gone to NullSec. They've come back. We've had the opportunity to go and participate in NullSec or HiSec, what have you. Uh, but the actual Faction Warfare mechanic that attracted us to begin with, you know, it's changed. And the last evolution of it, it's been several years, over three years since that last happened. And then certainly with the introduction of Citadels, it's changed the dynamic a bit. Um, and I don't think that was CCP's uh, intention you know, by any means, but... It certainly has changed the dynamic, uh, but uh, you know I've been involved in faction warfare. I, yes, it's been on the Caldari side, so my brethren yeah. on the, the you've been Galente side. You've been losing most of that time, right? Uh, you know, it, it's an underdog personality, man. It, it's like, do you want to be <laughs> right. on the winning team every day, or do you want to be on the losing team, striving to be a winner? And, and depending on which side of the aisle you're on, you're either loving life or you're just just not. Yeah, yeah. All right, fight the good fight. Yeah. Exactly. But you guys were the first to win. Uh, Kaldari actually won the f mm, faction war. Actually, there's no winning, I guess, because it's in flux constantly. But I think Kaldari were the first to actually win all the stations or all the systems. Yeah. So if you go back into lore, you know, that's true. Um, and we've not been able to redeem sense. And, well, that actually know, happened by players, but it was written into the lore. Yeah. So, you know, what's the next evolution? And... You know, at the end of the day, it's it's not so much about a game mechanic. I think, uh, you know, the game mechanic can evolve, certainly as the player personalities and interests evolve. Mm -hmm. um, but we need to level the playing field. And and I would love nothing more than to see Faction Warfare really truly be about uh, the talent of the teams coming together versus, um, you know, any mechanic leveraging either side. I, I think we have some opportunity there. Yeah. So, uh, what draws you to Faction War? Because that's uh, an area that is not, not everybody goes there. Um, the Faction War, so I've been playing since it started. When it came out, it was kind of buggy. Uh, there was a book that came out with it that made it more interesting. It talked about different characters and how they were involved in the beginning of this war uh, between the empires. And uh, it was supposed to be, I think, the place where people went to kind of learn how to PvP and to get your, it was supposed to be RVB, right? Red versus blue. Uh, what they set up, it was, Faction War was actually supposed to be the place where you go to get your instant action and fun and that sort of thing, and then you could, you know, come and go from the game. Uh, it, it didn't end up working out that way. It's kind of, what kind of niche do you think it occupies? Well, you know, I can't speak to everybody, but I can certainly speak for myself, and I run into others like me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my personal life, uh, you know, I'm a professional, so... Uh, it, from a salary position, you get paid to do a job, whether it's four days a week or seven days a week. Um, so the ability to come home and log in and have some PvP content where I can go ahead and compete against other people and work together with the team and blow off steam, Faction Warfare really supports that. It allows me uh, to log in and, and blow off steam with some, you know, my comrades, my friends. And, and I've made friends on all factions. It's not just about Kaldari, mm -hmm. but, you know, there's a friendly banner across the board. So I, I think Faction Warfare really fills the niche of those that want PvP on demand. You know, I've done the NullSec piece, you know, the PAPs and, you know, the call to arms and the hurry up and wait. Well, you just said PAPs, so were you in the CFC or the Imperium? Yeah, going back to uh, Razor, man. You were in Razor? Yeah, one of my alts, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Razor is a great tournament team, a uh, great alliance for a long, long time. Yeah, I had a great experience there. I was with, uh, I was with Roving Guns for about six months and had a great experience and... Uh, had a good time with them, but that, 
at the end of the day, I needed to do that to just reinforce the fact that faction warfare uh, is me. I, I've always been involved in faction warfare consistently, and um, you know, I, I suspect unless something drastically changes, I'll, I'll be here, you know, four and a half years from now too. Yeah. Well, you guys are actually, and I was saying that uh, Kaldari has been on the losing side for quite a number of years. And you've stuck it out, and now you guys are actually winning. Yeah, we're coming around, and you know what? It's, look, depending on your vantage point, it's either because Cal Mill has evolved, or the Galente have burned out, or, you know, some mechanics have changed and affected one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Really, at the end of the day, I don't think any faction that I've been communicating with um, agrees that faction warfare is fixed. It's broken. There's some changes that have happened. We're certainly in need of a refreshment. And, and really, my candidacy isn't about Kaldari. And, and I certainly have had that pushback of like, oh my gosh, you know, you're, you're here just for Kaldari. There, there's nothing in it for me for Kaldari. Yeah. It, it's really about faction warfare. And if, if the mechanic of faction warfare doesn't evolve with the player taste of all the factions, and if we can't evolve the Citadels, which I think the Citadels are great, but at the end of the day, I think uh, it's changed the dynamic of faction warfare. You know, we got to get ahead of it. That doesn't make any sense that you would just represent Kaldari interests. I think people can say that, but they're just trying to invent a narrative or something. I, I honestly think if you're in faction, if you're in faction warfare, you're in faction warfare because it all works the same. Um, <clears throat> I guess there's some distinct advantages because of racial divides, right? Like, you know, it's easier to go to the market in Kaldari space. So, uh, I don't know, maybe there's some advantages you could kind of protect that way. But I, I just think that's a uh, red herring. Uh, it sounds like uh, what you're trying to protect or look after or influence is more of a play style than an actual faction even, or even just faction war. You're trying to protect the ability to um, to fit even to your lifestyle, right? You want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I think what drove me, I mean, Eve has been my first and will forever be my MMO. And prior to that, I've been actively involved in first-person shooters, going back to Rainbow Six back in the day, Ghost Recon at Battlefield. So the PvP dynamic of going head-to-head -head with others and competing, you know, bringing not only your skill set and understanding of the game at hand but you know the talent and leveraging your team support that that appeals to me and so when i got involved with eve and you know we're going back what four some odd plus years ago getting involved with faction warfare 100 percent has been about uh the whole i think the rpg style of it mm -hmm. battlestar galactica that's what attracted me to the caldari the capitalists and whatnot mm -hmm. the hyper capitalism Oh, yeah, of course. But at the end of the day, um, as, as my personal life changed, Eve has always been there. I could log in at 3 o'clock in the morning. I could log in at 6 o'clock in the morning. I had friends, comrades. You know, we could go out and do stuff. I think the next evolution for Eve, specifically with Faction Warfare, is, is refreshing it. Because we have seen pilots come in from high sec, new pilots, going through Faction Warfare, low sec space. And then they end up in null sec. And then some of them come back. And, and if you remember, not, it wasn't too long ago, we had groups from null sec coming to support the factions, in, you know, faction warfare low sec, and they struggled with the small gang PvP yeah, style. Yeah, they don't do very well. They, they don't. And for me, I, I think there's a bonus to both sides of that. Like right now, the evolution of faction warfare has come to the point where we're flying rattlesnakes, we're flying T3s, you know, we get the Proteuses and you know, the Tengus and everything, you know, we've got the bridging going on with the Titans and whatnot, and mm -hmm. that's great. But it, it attracts different personalities, and I would say Faction Warfare, low sex space right now, has, is more comprehensive in what it offers. You know, you want to be of a small gang? You know, we've been involved in frigate fights where we're taking down, you know, battle cruisers. Mm -hmm. Likewise, we've also been involved in, you know, the T3s and, and the battleships, the rattlesnakes, and you know, we do 26 billion worth of damage and we suffer 100 million worth of damage. You know, it's it really comes down to the team coming together, having a strong Lodgy support. But here's my concern, mm -hmm. uh, matter all, is that, you know, as all the evolutions of EVE continue, one of the things that's been neglected and eroding away is, is the low-sec lifestyle. 
you know, is, you know, we do have some comfort, sure, than not being in NullSec. NullSec certainly brings more vulnerability than being in low sec. But there is a component to the small gang, you know, competition and certainly attracting pilots that maybe cannot support a three or four hour uh, call to arms and maybe can sign in only for 45 minutes an hour. Eve Faction Warfare supports that. And, and I think there's a, a component to that that's important to support. Uh, but again, we haven't had the change since long before Inferno. And, you know, I think the fact that we're talking about several Faction Warfare candidates, some of them have been in it, some of them may want to be in it, but they want to represent it. Mm -hmm. um, that's huge, man. I think there's something out there in the community that says, you know what, this is a forgotten, you know, forgotten component that we need to at least look at and address. And really, my role is to communicate those needs, bring it to CCP, and then partner with the other leaders, whether it's uh, CSM candidates that have already been there before or new ones, and say, hey, look, you know, I I'm just here to be a voice. And what can we do to change this component to evolve and improve uh, the faction warfare, low sec uh, lifestyle? Yeah. Now, so their desire is clearly there, uh, but also the history is there. Uh, and I've heard somebody refer to you as a war hero <laughs> in passing. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations for building up a rep among faction warriors. Uh, you, you know, it's, um, you know, I've been there, done that, but I haven't been there and done that by myself. I, you know, I've had, you know, great team pilots uh, in my corner and, uh, you know, I, I guess if nothing else, we, we sucked it up and uh, we made it happen. Uh, I don't know. It's great. So that's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then you said you're, you're a professional in real life. How is that in influencing your ability to... Um, I mean, what's what's really clear about this CSM? Let me skip to this question instead. Uh, I was going to go into your personal life uh, or ask you questions about that, but I'll work in this way. Uh, one of the things that was said, because CSM 11 was considered a recouping year from the previous CSM, uh, where trust was rebuilt and even enemies because they were really, you know, two null sec groups uh, that were dominating the CSM. Everybody thought it was going to be a disaster civil war. Wasn't. Everybody actually uh, seems by all accounts to have gotten along for the most part, maybe almost uh, completely. And uh, the one thing they came out and said in a unified way was you want to put adults in CSM. So to me, you sound like an adult. Uh <laughs> Well, does that mean I get my ARP? I get my uh, retirement package early, or <laughs> <laughs> well, in this game, yeah, there's a lot of people on ARP, but <laughs> that's awesome. But I think it has to do with behavior and putting aside uh, anything that has to do with uh, internal politics to really look after the game and to craft it uh, in a, in a better way. So, what is your personal like background that that would kind of make that possible? Yeah, so, you know, I was not ready for CSM last year. Um, you know, there's, you know, people have asked me, you know, why are you ready now? Why didn't you run last year? Why didn't you run the year before? And, you know, really the evolution of Silas Black, of, of my character, you know, certainly my personality coming to the table and, and what I bring from an in real life expertise to the table uh, could not have happened last year. Uh, as executor of Templus Cal SF, formerly Dragon R's back in, you know, February of 2012. You know, I had to pass the baton. So Omar Jumper, you know, took over the executorship of CCDM and, and I, I took a backseat and it was really, it didn't happen overnight. There was a good six months of, you know, my supporting and onboarding and delegating and, you know, drilling down in detail the different team members that needed to come together to, you know, take the baton and carry it forward. But really this year, you know, when we looked at it, you know, I had the time and flexibility to get involved with CSM. CSM is really 100% a, a, a second job, something else that, you know, needs to happen. Um, you know, you need the flexibility to, you know, put in the hours. And I couldn't have done it last year, but this year I can. You know, from a personal standpoint, what I bring to the table uh, as a professional, you know, I'm a chief, you know, chief operating officer for a large dental service organization in North America. And, you know, I don't have to be an expert in dentistry, but, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm an expert in putting teams together and making sure that, you know, we bring the right experts to the table, that we're checking our egos at the door, that we're, you know, asking for the input. You can have 10 different personalities coming to the table, and I, I will 
tell you, Matterall, mm-hmm. that having the more influences and personalities at the table is better than having the ten same carbon copies of yourself. You know, I don't profess to be an expert in faction warfare. I can tell you right now, I am not an expert in PvP. Go ahead and look at my kill board. It's pretty <laughs> much stagnant for this past year. Um, but if you look at what has happened with the evolution of Templus Kallus F, and this, again, is not about Templus Kallus F and Kaldari. This is about representing faction warfare. But as an example, what we've been able to do as a team within our alliance, I think, speaks for itself. And that, that's the quantifiable data. That's what I bring to the table. So I've reached out to Galente. I've reached out to the Mimitar and Amar. I've gotten feedback. And it's really being their voice of reason, being able to come to the table and, and partner with the other leaders at CSM, partner with CCP and say, hey, guys, you know, this is important. If you go ahead and tweak this component, tweak this you know, mechanic, look what's going to happen here. I don't think that happened with the Citadels. I think Citadels are great. I love what they do. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, the negative impact that it created with their rollout in Faction Warfare was not good. I suspect had we had somebody with a Faction Warfare background representing and being a voice of reason, mm-hmm. we probably would have seen another uh, check or, or gateway that when it rolled out, it didn't or wouldn't have impacted faction warfare. Do it's you, my two cents. I'm speculating. But. Yeah. Do you think that they, uh, I imagine they thought of all parts of the game that it was going to affect, but probably some more than others. What What are some of the problems uh, that faction war has with citadels? Well, you know, faction warfare has always been about system control. So, you know, you get your guys together, you go ahead and you compete. You flex up, mm-hmm. you bring it to vulnerable, you throw everything at, you know that you can, including the kitchen sink, you know, at mm-hmm. the iHub. And once it turns over at downtime, you gain the system control. What the Citadels, you know, Citadels have done is have, you know, it's essentially removed that component. It doesn't matter that it's Galente space. I can have a Caldari Citadel there. I can boot camp, which means that I can continue to siege you in your home system with no pain of having to leave system to reship. It's like you can move your beehive into their uh, territory, uh, and it's mobile, and you just make another one, uh, you know, for a different system, and so there's no way of pushing you back. It sounds like, and it's a serious beehive. We're not talking pots here. This is a beehive that has, you know, essentially it mirrors a lot of the components of, you know, a station. So, yeah, it, it, it creates some frustration there. Uh, it certainly creates some challenges in terms of system control. And what we're seeing is the content hasn't changed. You know, PvP, people that are in love with PvP, you know, people have joked around that faction warfare also means uh, free war deck. You know, so you can always <laughs> yeah. find somebody you can... Uh, you know, you can assault day in and day out in low sec. Um, but at the end of the day, what it has changed is that system control. It just doesn't add value. Yeah. And again, I don't think it was a CCP uh, decision. I, I think they had an idea. I think it was a valid idea. But at some point, somebody didn't say, wait, hold on a second. How would it affect this area here? And, right. and that's what I'm hoping to do is to be that voice of reason, you know, to make sure that the Amar, you know, Nimitar and Galente and Kaldari are protected and you know, certainly those that want to continue to be involved in faction warfare. So have you read uh, any of the lore behind faction war, like the book or some of the um, what are they, chronicles or any of that stuff? You know, uh, so Tybus Hef. Yeah. <laughs> is, That's what you remind me of. <laughs> Tybus oh Hef. my gosh. All right, so depending on which side you're sitting on, I'm either a patriot or a terrorist. Right, right. <laughs> Very divisive Kaldari leader, but actually you don't remind me of him. He was like a labor leader, wasn't he? Uh, uh, yeah, he was a labor yeah, leader. Yeah, he, he was, man. He, yeah. he was, uh, and depending on who you talk to, he's died several times, but. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, but he wasn't a soldier like, you know, you might have been uh, coming into this. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, do you like get into the faction part of the faction warfare or do you um see it as more gameplay uh, that sort of thing yeah, you know neither i mean yeah of course we can talk about a gameplay i mean i've got the wife and kids and they're like what are you doing i'm like i'm gonna go save the world and they're like what <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. excuse me really it. excuse me i'm saving the world 
saving the world. It's like you're having dinner because I just took out a Galente plea. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, it's um, I don't get into the RPG part because my rush is, is literally working with these guys. Uh, Omar Jumper, Last Spartan. That, that's what I'm after. Your rush, like what? Get, what does it for you? Oh my God, it's the team, man. So if you yeah. go back to you know when the baton was passed from Corey Brom, Dark Circle Enforcement, you know we had nine you know corporations in the alliance, and and we were just CCDM had come from State Section Nine, and we came on over, and he's like, oh, I'm done, I'm I'm I'm, I'm leaving, and this was after the first major loss, uh, Evoke left, uh, Happy Endings left, uh, BRGR. Wow. Yeah, so if you're going back to that, and so we're sitting there, and we're like, um, what do you want to do? And he's like, yeah, I'm done. And I'm like, what does that mean? He's like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, well, before you like dissolve the alliance, can I at least play with it? <laughs> can I play? Can I borrow that? <laughs> can, I, can I give it a shot? He's like, well, yeah, if you want. And, and he did, and that was uh, that would have been December of 2013. We'd been around mm. almost a year then as an alliance, and then, you know, come uh, May of 2000. Uh, that's probably the height of the game, right? Population wise. Yeah, yeah. So there was the population. Uh, you know, Inferno hadn't come out yet. That came out shortly thereafter. Mm -hmm. It was right around there. But, you know, they passed the baton, and, and all I could do, matter all, was just try to apply what I knew in terms of people. And I needed to, one, build a relationship with the uh, CEOs of the other, you know, corporations and, and try to paint a vision of, look, this is where we can be, but these are some of the things we need to agree to and get on board with and, and we did we lost a couple we got a few on board but at the end of the day we we as templus dragonars mind you we weren't templus cal sf yet um uh, we came on board and uh, we started making the change we came up with an operating agreement uh, charter all that good stuff and and that was the start of it but we were not able to be effective the way we are today uh, back then i mean our lodgy um it was a joke i mean uh crossing zebras and i we had a I, night in so a few years ago, I had an interview with them. and oh, He says Nidin, by the way. Nidin. So <laughs> he's going to shoot me when I see him. In, I'm going to own a few beers. I know I am. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, our Lodgy was a joke. And knowing that a majority of the players that would come on board were Kaldari, so we had to go with shield, even though everybody's like, oh, you got to go with armor and this and that. I'm like, why? You know, I need, yeah, I need you're to leverage You're Kaldari, for God's sakes. You shield. Yes. Yeah, I know, man. It's like, let us at least try to represent our yeah. race and, and certainly leverage our strengths that they've already committed to in their skill set before I piss them off and they quit. Yeah. And that and that's what we did. And we started out slow. And, and then ultimately, you know, we have one of the best shield logic teams around. And, you know, it took time. But hands down, I mean, these guys, you know, force, you know, re, you know, the force multipliers mm -hmm. make it happen. Yeah. But it took time, and it really took time partnering the, with the different leaders, getting buy-in. Look, matter I'm not an expert in all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. What I, I do know is that you need to leverage your experts. So sitting at a CSM table working with CC, you know, CCP, you know, I'm just really bringing you know, the needs of faction warfare collectively to the table and then partnering with those and, and hopefully helping them see the wisdom of doing things differently. Uh, and, and getting our word out there, uh, and that's what I do in real life. You know, it's what I would do here. Uh, very comfortable with it, and, uh, and having fun, Dan. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like uh, it, it sounds like you're good at your job, right? You bring uh, bring people together, and uh, uh, you know, uh, leverage uh, the best resources. Bring out the uh, bring out the best in uh, certain people's characteristics and stuff like that. Because it doesn't sound like you've done it yourself. You certainly aren't taking credit for doing it yourself. So it sounds like your emphasis on making sure that everybody else is, you know, moving together in the same direction. You have to have the right people on the team. And yeah, you're right. Same direction. You have to be aligned. Look, you do not have to have been an NFL player to be an NFL coach. Pretty hmm. much. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, <clears throat> have you done any other uh, publicity, by the way, for your campaign? Yeah, so I uh, spoke to uh, an Adiron colleague, uh, somebody from the other side of the war zone, um, and that's it. So it's really been you and him. Uh, Ashtarafi, probably. You know, I have not spoken to him. I know he... Oh, uh, different colleague. Did, yeah, well, he's recovering. I guess he had uh, 
some work done. So I'm I'm gonna schedule with him hopefully this weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, you know him and Nightin's group. But yeah, just getting the word out, man. You know, it's uh, I think people have known me. I, you know, you speak to the war hero part, and I mm -hmm. think that's cool as hell. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I'm gonna go back to my wife. I'll be like, you know, not only did I save the world, but I'm a war hero because <laughs> yeah. of that. And she's like, you're not getting any tonight. Go to bed. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, I just I think people have known of me and and have read enough stuff about me. But this again, it's my first time uh, at CSM, and it is different. At mm -hmm. all, it is different because I'm not sitting here proselytizing, sitting on a soapbox. We got to do this, this, and this. I am 100% about low sec, faction warfare, PvP. I believe citadels need to be evolved, but we absolutely need to get the right candidates in there, and I hope I'm one of them. But we need to get the others too to help evolve, you know, our beloved game. Yeah. And, and I can't do it without the other uh, factions supporting us. So. Oh. Good luck bringing them all together. We'll see if it works out. Um, thanks for showing up. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. No, I appreciate you reaching out, and uh, certainly uh, have enjoyed my time. And uh, I don't know. It's, it's it's good stuff. So once again, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for coming. <laughs>